Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at this Commodore Colt machine. Um, this is obviously, it's, it's a PC clone from Commodore, of course the makers of the you know, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga, one of my favorite PC manufacturers of all time. And this is a uh, clone PC, it's an uh, 8088 based machine. Uh, probably, I don't have the exact date off the top of my head, but probably the late 80s. Um, take a closer look. There's the cool little Commodore badge. It's actually, that's not a sticker. It's not a sticker, it's actually like a little badge that's glued on there, which is really kind of cool. Uh, here's a uh, five and a quarter inch drive. This is a 360 kilobyte. This is not a high density 1.2 megabyte drive. And under here, uh, which took a little bit doing, and I'll explain why, this is a 720 kilobyte uh, floppy drive. Of course, three and a half inch. Um, unlike other uh, PCs, it this isn't this wasn't something you just put in and it works. There was a little bit of finagling and a lot of figuring out on the internet. Uh, so, but this is the Commodore Colt. This is actually the exact same uh, motherboard or computer uh, of the of the PC ten three and uh, the PC twenty three. Uh, which are pretty boring sounding computers, uh, kind of like business machines really, but they use the exact same motherboard as the Colt. I, the Colt really, it's the same thing, it's a PC-10-3, if you have one of those, this is the same thing, it's just rebadged and the case is slightly different. It, I think a couple executives were sitting around and they're like, hmm, this PC-10-3 sounds pretty boring, which it does sound extremely boring. It's like, well let's throw a name on it, we'll call it Colt, we could sell it to people that play games and do you know, word processing at home. I guess that's businessy too. But yeah, so this is the Colt. Um, the PC twenty three, which is the also the same machine. The only difference is, other than again the case being slightly different, um, is it came factory stock with a hard drive. That's it. It's the only difference. Same motherboard. So uh, turn it around. Well, first let's look at the side. Uh, on the side here we have, oh, there he is, move. We've got the reset button and keyboard. Keyboard is uh, this thing, nothing fancy, it's just Commodore labeled. Keyboard. All right, so on the back, take a look at the back. Nice power switch. Uh, you know, power Commodore. Yeah, it even says model PC 10C, PC 20C, the Colt. I, I'm assuming. So um, I like this crate for the fan <laughs> of the PSU for some reason. I just like it. It's, um, mouse port. It's, uh, it, it looks like a serial port, but it's actually for. Uh, I don't think just a regular serial mouse will work. You need what it, these, which is the same model one three five one. I, these are the same as the Amiga, I think. Not the Commodore sixty four, but the Amiga version will work on this. Um, I think it uses standard MS drivers, but so it has its own dedicated mouse port. Although it will work with a uh, serial mouse, if you you'll need a. An adapter for the smaller port that looks like this, but it will work. You can put a serial mouse if you want. Uh, so going back, the built-in video uh, does composite out and the RGBI. Uh, a dip switch, and we have the nice little, you know, uh, chart here to explain the configuration. Parallel port, printer port. Someone even wrote printer on there and an anemic supply of expansion slots. There's four, but inside there's actually only three ISA uh, slots, 8-bit. I've added this sound blaster, I'll show you in a second. Yeah, that kind of sucks, but the good thing is uh, it's got a lot built into it. So uh, I'm gonna open it up, show you guys inside. All right, here's a look inside of it. I've moved the expansion cards, which I'll show you in a minute. 
as you can see, three 8-bit ISA slots. Um, I know you can't see much on the motherboard. Remember, these are just supplementary videos to my computer blog, so if you want to see the full motherboard and you want to learn more about this, go to the blog. There should be a link in the descriptions. So, um, yeah, I mean, it can take uh, full size. It has those little slot things for the long cards. Um, but on board, you've got 640 kilobytes of RAM. Um, here is, I think, this is the processor? Yeah, yeah here's our processor. Whoa, wait, wait, nope, over, oh, there we go. That's our processor. Um, the cool thing about this machine is um, a lot of machines at the time had like a turbo button. Uh, so you get 4.77 megahertz, that's the standard. And then you hit the turbo button, which in this time period actually did what it says it did. And it would boost it up to 7.14 megahertz, I think. Oh, drifting. Um, the cool thing about this computer is because of its chipset, the Faraday chipset, which I don't know if that's that's the that's the BIOS, I think. Um, but anyways, it has a Faraday chipset. It actually has three turbo settings, which you set by keyboard commands, and uh, you have the standard um, 4.77 megahertz. And then you turbo speed, which is, I think it's the 7.14. And then you have another double speed, which takes up to 10 megahertz. Um, now in this machine, of course, if you put in a V20, an NEC V20, you get those same speeds, but boosted as long as your V20 is rated to run at uh, 10 megahertz. I stuck with a regular 8088 just for compatibility. Um, you can't see it. Sorry, it's blurry. Underneath it, next to it, is the coprocessor socket, which I've installed a 8087 for math coprocessing, which will never ever really see any use unless I play with the original SimCity or Falcon or do CAD programming or something on it. Um, just make sure your 8087 is rated to work at 10 megahertz. If you, you know, have one in and you boost it to 10 megahertz and it's not rated for 10 megahertz, it will probably start acting erratically. Also under there that you cannot see, uh, again, look at the blog, there is the chipset and then there's also the built-in graphics. The cool thing, the one good thing, the built-in graphics are very good. They're very comparable to like an ATI Wonder. So, it, you know, it does a, a Hercules, it does CGA, you, it doesn't do EGA or that, but for the time period I wanted this thing for, I didn't care about it. This, for me, this is a purely CGA machine. Um, so the built-in graphics are, are fine. You don't need an add-on video card. Uh, at least in my opinion, you don't. Also, you can see it kind of. Right, see that down there? Looks like a IDE built in. Oh, also the floppy controller and floppy, uh, let's see the floppy cable connection. That's built in the motherboard too. So you have a built-in floppy controller. Um, but you also, that is not standard IDE, that's 8-bit IDE, and uh, although that's a really cool option to have built in and you don't ever see that, it's pretty much useless. Uh, there's maybe about 12 different hard drives that supported 8-bit IDE, I think they called it a different name too. They're real hard to find, most of them are probably unreliable, if you find them on eBay they're definitely overpriced, don't bother. Um, what I did is I had, thankfully I had this thing, which is a 8-bit controller. It's a Silicon Valley 8-bit hard disk adapter, uh, ADP50L. You can also use um, the IDEXT cards, which are pretty common now. Um, actually, I've heard this, something about the protocols of it, it's, it's a little faster, this card. Um, but yeah, you can use then, if you have one of these, it's an 8-bit. You can use um, modern IDE drives. I used this. Huh. I just used a compact flash adapter. Uh, it's only 32 megabytes, which in my opinion is enough for this. I think I have DOS 3.2 on it, um, maybe even lower, which can only really see 32 megabytes anyways. But for a pure CGA machine of this vintage, that's fine. And it's real fast and it's quiet. and. Uh, 
it works. It works for me. <laughs> Since I'm not doing a lot of intense stuff or a lot of read writing uh, cycles on it, I'm fine with the uh, CF card. And it, make sure, but well, you don't have to make sure, but I went for an industrial grade, a little bit better, more reliable. If you remember the sound card I had in this, that would be this. Um, it's an original Sound Blaster. C1989, and I have the chips in it. I think this is the Sound Blaster 1.0. So you don't, um, it has this backwards compatibility with the Creative Music System via these two chips, which are really easy to find. Um, later reversions, I think the Sound Blaster 1.5, uh, I think that's what it's called. It, it has another like gal chip that you have to put in. And they were hard to find. Now they finally, someone figured out how to reverse engineer them, but it's still a hassle. Um, I like this one just because all you need, if you want the backwards compatibility, all you need is these two chips, which are really easy to find. And they're the... What are they? The SAA 1099Ps from Philips. So, um, this probably won't be seeing much use. Uh, most of the games from this era just use PC speaker. This is really just in there because I can put it in there. It's kind of a novelty. If I ever want to play like Prince of Persia in this thing or something, at least I'll have sound. Uh, so the details are a lot better on the blog, as I said, but uh, it's this is picky. This machine's really picky about drives. Um, it only supports 360K and 720. Um, It uses an edge connector. The other one, I don't, I can't, don't think I can get in there, but I had to use an adapter um, to turn it into, um, up, oh, it actually came on connected. See, if you can see back there, I had, I used the edge adapter that changes the drive so it will connect with this, with the edge connector. After this video, I'm gonna reconnect it. Um, anyways, again, go to the blog for details, but you can't just throw in any drive, any 720K drive. You can't just take, you know, like most PCs of the time, get a 1.44 megabyte drive and just stick it in there and the machine will see it as 720. No, it has to be certain drives that has jumpers on them. And because I don't know why, that's just how this machine works, but you have to set, have drives with jumpers. Um, this one's jumpered as the A drive, it's like DS0, and the other one's jumpered as uh, DS1, uh, which would be like B drive. It doesn't automatically uh, select it. It doesn't matter if you use a different cable, you just, you need those drives, those type of drives with jumpers. Uh, you also have to set other things on the jumpers uh, for the motor, signaling to the motor. I do not remember off the top of my head how that goes, but again, link to the blog, it will show you how to set these machines up for uh, if you want to add a 720 uh, KB drive. So, but actually that took a lot of work figuring that out. So very cool and smart people over at uh, Vintage Computer Forums, Skydiving Girl and Scally or Scally if I can pronounce his or her name correctly, did a lot of work uh, figuring it out and uh, thank you for that. So now we know. And that's about all, the proprietary power supply, uh, form factor anyways, connector to. It it's kind of looks like the one on the Amiga 4000. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty cool computer. This is actually right now my main 8088 machine. This is the machine I use for all of my uh, early, you know, monochrome or, uh, you know, CGA stuff or uh, composite CGA stuff. This is the main machine I use right now. Um, the lack of slots is a little bit limiting, but uh, really with the good built-in video, the cool that you can select the three speeds, uh, it, you know, it makes up for that. So that is the Commodore Colt. All right, well, here it is. I set it back up. I'll just power it up so you guys can see it power up, but also I want to see if I uh, put it all back together correctly and it's all working, so... Um, oh, and you may notice this is a Tandy uh, CJ monitor. Uh, when I got this, it did come with a little Commodore monitor, which was really nice. It was real little, but it was uh, monochrome. 
and I really want to do CGA gaming. So I replaced it with this that I had laying around, which is just kind of an old beat up uh, Tandy CGA monitor. I'd like to find one that does uh, composite CGA too, because I know some games take advantage of that. So, um. okay. Just go around with that power switch. Yeah, see it sees our processor. Counting up the RAM. Six hundred and forty. There's the hard drive card. That's a normal sound for it. See if it detects it. If it didn't, it would be that. Uh, that uh, was yeah. Okay. Date and time. See most. Enter. Oop. Uh, doesn't matter. Yep. Here we go. C drive. So we're all good. Uh, 32 megabyte <laughs> compact flash hard drive in it. And uh, all right. Well, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you look, uh, check out the blog for more information and articles on other computer-related stuff.